The Acolyte Episode 2, where the box of rocks gets dumber and Disney throws another log on the bonfire that was Star Wars. I don't know about y'all, I ain't mad. It's just not worth it anymore. In fact, I'm going to take advantage of the fire. I'm going to barbecue. Put on a brisket, a couple racks of ribs. Pull up a chair. You want some potato salad while we wait for the meat to cook? We're going to have us a good time. Burn, baby, burn. I can attack so I cast. I guess we got to go over the plot, whatever there is of it, before we get into the architecture and the aesthetics. The good twin wakes up on the Jedi ship where she's a guest at the state's expense. Although you wouldn't know it, she's not locked in a cell or handcuffed or restrained in any way. She's just chilling out in the rec room. The good twin has been arrested for suspicion of murdering a Jedi master. What's her priority at the moment? Getting in the panties of the female Jedi Padawan. The Padawan, she likey. In fact, she's very interested in how flexible the good twin claims to be. Coming from the art world, two women being into each other? It's not like the first time I've ever seen that. A couple times I saw way more than I ever wanted to see. But that's beside the point. The issue here is the good twin, she's being held on suspicion of murdering a Jedi master. If true, that would make her one of the most dangerous beings in the galaxy. Hey, one of the people who's just arrested me for a suspicion of murdering one of your colleagues? You want a kissy face? Sure. What could go wrong? I'm sure everything will be just fine. Let's do it. Just before the clothes start to fly, there for a minute I had to make sure I was still on Disney Plus and not one of those other websites with the independent films. But just before the clothes start flying, other Jedi come in, ruin the mood. Meanwhile, the evil twin just waltzes into a local Jedi temple, front door and all, looking for her next target. Does the super sneaky assassin strike from the shadows? No, this is Disney Plus. Are you kidding me? She goes right out in the open and assumes her stance, complete with hand flourishes. Speaking as somebody who has a bit of a martial arts background, I've been in a fight or two in my time. I've actually had somebody come up and pick a fight with me before. This evil twin, assassin, whatever she is, her hand flourish stance thingy, not even sure what to call it, is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's like somebody saw the Princess Bride and didn't understand what they saw. What makes Indigo Montoya's speech work? He had heart and sincerity. This? <laughs> Please. The Jedi Master is levitating while he meditates. Apparently he's been meditating for years. He's protected by a force field. Ah, I see what they did there. Force field? Get it? Force? Field? Yeah, that's dumb. This assassin is none too bright. Pretty much describes everybody in Disney Star Wars. She keeps attacking a force field that it is clear she has no chance of getting through. She makes so much noise falling all over the room, somebody comes to investigate. So she flees through a skylight. A skylight that can't be closed. It's always open. Right over the assassin's target. Why did the evil twin walk through the front door? Back on the ship, evil Jedi, in episode one, when he learned that good twin was being accused of murder, he thought she was innocent but he was still willing to nail her hide to the barn door to further the Jedi agenda. Evil. As I was saying, back on the ship, evil Jedi learns while he's holding good twin, bad twin showed up and just tried to kill another Jedi. Clearly the good twin ain't the assassin. Green corrupt Jedi lady tells evil Jedi, you know the person that just was a prisoner who he never bothered to investigate? We don't know her loyalties, her agenda. All we know for sure is she wants to get in the panties of your Padawan. Yeah, that one. Make her part of your investigation team. Investigating her twin sister. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be fine. I mean, what could go wrong? Don't worry about it. Just do it. Evil Jedi says, I like the way you think. Consider it done. Evil twin has an accomplice who happens to work at the only apothecary in town. They come up with a scheme to poison their target. The evil twin returns to the Jedi Temple and drops down through the open skylight. Wait a minute. 
Why go through the open skylight this time? Why not come through the front door? I mean, these super smart, super clever Jedi have never even heard of the concept of security. They have no clue about locks, passwords, or even sentries. The meditating Jedi wakes up from 10 years of meditation and agrees to take the poison, killing himself. At the exact same time evil twin is convincing levitating Jedi to drink the poison, the investigation squad is out front chatting up the other Jedi. By the time they get back to levitating Jedi, he's dead. The good twin says, hey, wait a minute. This poison's from my hometown, and it's fresh. It had to come from somewhere nearby. And the other Jedi say, you know, there's only one apothecary in town. Hmm. Is there some connection here? These crack investigating geniuses go and stand on a balcony out in the open, one story above the ground, right across the street from the one and only apothecary, where we learn there's a new guy running the apothecary that no one has ever seen before. Hmm, looks like another valuable clue. These people aren't even trying anymore. The good twin is sent into the apothecary to chat up the new guy. Things go sideways real fast, so the rest of the team comes busting into the rescue. We have somebody who's an accessory to murder. He just helped poison a Jedi. So the Jedi investigating team tells him, You cooperate? We'll let you off with a warning. But if you ever do it again, you'll be in big trouble, mister. We mean it. Apothecary dude sings like a canary. He rolls over on the evil twin in a heartbeat, tells the Jedi she'll be back here later tonight. Sure enough, later that night, evil Jedi confronts evil twin. He whips her seven ways to Sunday. This assassin is lousy at her job. I don't think she could whip cream. At any rate, the assassin gets tired of getting the stuffing knocked out of her, so she escapes by throwing a smoke bomb. Okay, how does a smoke bomb work with Jedi? Who cares at this point? In the chaos, Evil Twin grabs a vehicle. Evil Twin's confronted by a good twin, who starts shooting at her as the Evil Twin flees. Evil Twin confronts Apothecary Dude, says, You gave me up. I'm going to kill you. Apothecary Dude says, No, 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 no. I know where your next target's at. Let's go. And Evil Twin says, Okay, let's go. End of episode. I can assure you all, my description of the plot is a lot more entertaining than the plot itself. Not because my description's that great. The plot sucks that bad. So now let's talk a little architecture and aesthetics. Even if you ignore the lens flare, all the beauty shots of the city are grainy and low resolution. They don't want you to see any details because the closer you look, the more it falls apart, becomes unbelievable. My first reaction was defensive position on a high promontory overlooking a large body of water. That's historically accurate. That's believable. My next impression was, oh, this started out as a fortress or palace or temple. And then over time, it was converted into a town, kind of like Split in Croatia. Split started out life as the retirement palace of the Roman Emperor Domitian, but by the Middle Ages, it had been adapted into a small fortified town. Again, historically accurate, believable. And I thought, very cool. Didn't take very long, though, to figure out that those towers on the outside of the walls, those serve no defensive function. They're purely decorative. This has always been a fortified town. Fortified town on a promontory overlooking a large body of water? That's still historically accurate and believable. But we have our first red flag. Not necessarily a problem yet, but a red flag. This city was built all at once at the same time, and it hasn't been modified over time. Cities that use high curtain walls for defense are pre-industrial. When you get gunpowder, you have low earthenwork walls. As soon as air power enters the picture, you go underground. Bunkers. Symbolism. The audience is going to interpret this city as medieval, ancient, 
hundreds of years old. And the designers do everything in their power to reinforce that interpretation. The medieval vibe is reinforced when you move inside the city. Narrow, crowded, dirty streets. All the building's walls are old, faded, cracked, and chipped. This place is dilapidated. You have a sense of an ancient city with modern technology cobbled onto it, fit in willy-nilly. The balcony that the Jedi geniuses used illustrates where the red flags begin to turn into problems. It's as faded and dilapidated as the rest of the city. Even the columns, who look like they might be made out of metal, are rusted and pitted, again reinforcing this idea of age. Before I point out the problem, I want to reiterate, we have been led to believe that this city was built all at once. There has not been modifications over time. This impression is further reinforced in the street scenes. Everything is equally faded and dilapidated. There's no evidence of newer buildings, newer additions, or any type of modifications. Just the stuffing of technology into the old city. If that's the case, why are all the edges on this balcony crisp and sharp? Why are all the edges on the decorations on the front of the balcony crisp and sharp? Why are all the edges on the columns still crisp and sharp? If this balcony is as old as we've been led to believe, all the edges should be smooth, worn, and rounded. There's a bigger problem. Why is the interior of the balcony just as faded as the rest of the city? It can't be. It doesn't get direct sunlight. Yes, but, okay, there are lots of arguments you can make to hand wave that problem away. Here's another one. Why is the counter inside the apothecary shop just as faded as the rest of the city? Moving to the exterior. Remember, this apothecary shop is supposed to be ancient hundreds of years old, just as dilapidated and worn as the rest of the city. So why are the edges around the entryway still crisp and sharp? Where are the wear patterns on the sidewalk in front of thousands of feet coming in and out over the generations? The side entrance to the Jedi Temple perfectly encapsulates all these contradictions in one little space. The aqua blue door on the right that shape of door can be found on other planets. That's new technology, and it's just as faded and dilapidated as the rest of the city. And then there's that large door that slides up and down. It can be found on other planets as well. It's modern technology. It's also faded and dilapidated as the rest of the city, but it has another even bigger problem. You all see those tracks that the door slides up and down in? The ones that look like they were put in at the same time the city was built, and the ones that simultaneously have no wear, we have a contradiction. A city that was built before the Industrial Revolution using technology that only could have been acquired after spaceflight had been achieved. I'm just scratching the surface. The more you dig, the more problems you find. The entire illusion collapses, the city becomes unbelievable. At a certain point, you might as well use cardboard cutouts. They're just as believable. That's why architects are taught to avoid faking history. It's very hard to do, very easy to screw up. And if you do screw it up, people will notice. They will sense the inauthenticity. They will think you're lying to them. They will become hostile to you and what you're doing. Looks like the brisket's going to need a little more time, but the ribs are done, so I'm going to go eat. Y'all want to join me for another barbecue? Y'all come back around next time for my critique of episode three. The fire is going to get bigger. There's going to be plenty for everyone. At any rate, I hope I've given y'all something to think about, and until next time, y'all be safe. If y'all are still here, I really appreciate it. While you're at it, why don't you like this video? Subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.